When I was a sophomore in high school, my favorite class was United States history. There are many different reasons you could say that this was my favorite. Perhaps I liked knowing what history was, so maybe we wouldn't repeat it. Or I just had a fascination with the US presidents. None of that was why I loved this class. Simply put, it was the last class of the day. The one thing that separated me from being able to go home after an entire day of feeling exhausted and like I was trying to seem like I knew what I was doing socially. Everyone in my class was very similar in this last class of the day. They would watch the clock obsessively, watch those minutes tick, tick, tick by. None of them exactly were paying attention as our teacher was lecturing. Me? I was sitting in the back. I was doodling almost excessively. My notes were covered in pictures of butterflies, of rainbows, of flowers, anime. And at the beginning of the semester, my teacher paces around the room while she's talking, looks down at all of my scribbles, and tells me to pay attention. Meanwhile, I am very confused about this instruction. None of my peers are paying attention. The minute the clock says there's two minutes remaining, they're leaning over, they're grabbing their stuff and packing it so they too can go home, go to a sports practice, or hang out with their friends. This left me thinking a lot. What exactly is attention? It turns out that attention is a capacity that our brains have to select inputs to focus on. We might be interested in sounds, we might hyper-focus on something that we find interesting or that we're passionate about, or we might be choosing to ignore things. Everybody has a variable span of attention, and it can change within an instant. I know I am distracted very often by a new notification on my phone or the sound of the metro rail train out there zooming by. A lot of us, though, have the same thing happen to us. Our minds wander about 47% of the time, according to a study from Harvard. Want to know what that really means? It means that almost half the time that you're doing something, you're thinking about something else completely different. Which means, if I take a look around the room right now, there's a good chance that half of you might be on your cell phone thinking about what's for lunch later today, or something else. And that's totally normal. But here's the other thing that happens, too. I'm autistic. And with my neurotype, it's seen that sometimes how I pay attention, or if I'm paying attention, I don't really meet those rules. Just like when I was in US history, and I was doodling on everything. When I would get the test results back from all the quizzes as well, I did really well in school. I got an A in US history that year. My teacher promptly stopped calling out my doodling. Doodling actually helps us learn. It helps us focus, it helps us retain new information, or grasp concepts that we're unfamiliar with. Some of my other behavior suggests that perhaps maybe I'm not listening either. I don't always make eye contact. I don't always look at people the way that I'm supposed to. I fidget. My hands always feel this need to be in motion. When people talk to me, sometimes I might look the other way. But I am taking in every single piece of information that I am being given, that folks are sharing with me. I'm hardly the only one who does this either. All sorts of other neurodivergent people have similar behaviors and traits. People who might also be autistic like me, people with ADHD or a learning disability, we all have unique ways of which we process the world. And for those of us who do, how we pay attention just doesn't look like paying attention. I can do my best to look at you straight in the eye as you're speaking with me. And it turns out I will miss almost every single thing you say. 
if I'm looking at, say, your shoes, or that really interesting thing in the background, I'll probably do a much better job taking it in. I like to ask people a question. Do you want me to look like I'm paying attention, or do you want me to actually pay attention? The same goes with even when my hands move, or my body is doing something else in order to process the world, to make it seem less stimulating in some way, shape, or form. We all do something to help us regulate. And it really calls into question what our idea of normal behavior really is. And when it comes to neurodivergent people like myself, we get held to a very different standard. Imagine a young child coming home from school. And chances are, they're hungry. They want a snack. And because of that, their fuse is a little short. They're not able to focus on their parents' instructions. And we just assume, well, that kid's probably just overwhelmed and they need a snack. Neurodivergent kids, we didn't always get that benefit of the doubt, that we're held to a different standard when we aren't necessarily listening to instructions. It's assumed we don't understand, or if we're coming home tired and hungry from school, that there are behaviors that need to change, that need to be fixed to be more typical. When really, just like the other kid, we too were just tired and hungry. All of these things make a difference when it comes to our attention and our attention spans. That our brains and bodies have very unique ways of navigating this world. Each of us has this. We all have different needs and different things that really call this into question. Neurodiversity really speaks to that idea, that after all, we have different brains. That is a natural fact of life, that we all process information differently. Our cognitive processes do things in their own unique way. You may think that this room, this stage, is quiet, that it's not very crowded, but you might not be processing, perhaps, something else, like the feel of if it's cold, if it's warm. Maybe to the person next to you, it's cold, and to you, you are sweaty. Everybody processes differently. And it doesn't mean that one of you is right and one of you is wrong. It just means different. Which means we really, truly have to rethink what does it really mean to be paying attention? Am I no longer listening when I am looking, when I am trying? My brain spends a lot of time paying attention, especially as an adult. That these things that we might have seen or viewed as problematic in kids translates so differently when you are an adult. Instead, People think that maybe you're being disrespectful or unprofessional. Neither is true. We're just trying to survive. I still find myself doodling quite a bit in my professional life. But I will be on the phone with somebody. I will be typing at a meeting. And still, I will pick up that pen in my left hand, draw some pictures, and realize that is how I'm going to remember what the person on the other end is saying and they do not get the right to tell me that I am unprofessional or not paying attention because of that. But that is what I need. And what if we all took stock of what it is that our bodies and our brains truly need in order to focus on something, whether it's for five minutes or five hours? What if we looked at what our bodies and brains are really thinking? that we pay attention to those cues internally and externally. And we realize that the thing that is difficult isn't paying attention so much as falling into this culture shift that has us acting in a way that is perceived as such. So what really needs to change, it turns out, isn't just eliminating distractions, 
Distractions will be everywhere in our lives, no matter what we do. If you ask me or you ask some of my friends who are also neurodivergent, we will tell you that distraction is where we find creativity. We find new solutions, we find new ideas. What really does need to be changing is our mindsets. And when we shift our attention into accommodating each of our needs and acknowledging them, perhaps we will really be flipping the script. That the attention that we've been giving, the idea of listening, should focus on really listening to ourselves and acknowledging what we must do in order to feel grounded, in order to feel supported, not just accepted, but feel like we're belonging. That after all, each of us is unique in the ways that we process are too. A neurodiverse lens has the potential to give us that. It has the potential to truly give us what we've been looking for, a way to be ourselves and to celebrate that every minute of every day. That's what needs to change, not questioning if I am listening or taking something in. Because there's a chance that not only am I doing that, but so are you in the way that feels truest to you. Thank you.